professional theater, right? And the first piece will occur in this space right here, in this lobby. So don't be alarmed or afraid or stressed out that you don't have a seat. It's just one piece, and we will, after the piece is over, you will be funneled to the left of the staircase, and we will watch the second piece in the long hallway. After the second piece occurs, then we will be led into the theater. We will take your seats, and you will be in maybe a safer or more traditional theater kind of setting, right? Um, basically for the duration of the concert. I believe, I'm just gonna see the green screen. Yeah. The, it is difficult to see the second piece because we've got a lot of people attending this concert. Thank you very much for being here. Um, but there's not a lot of space. There are cushion, cushions and chairs to sit in and then there's standing room, but in the end, some of you won't see anything but the back of the person's head in front of you. In order for you to be able to see the piece, during intermission, what we will do is we will run the second piece again. So those of you who have seen it, and why we're in this um, lobby instead of a theater. As Holly and I embarked on our um, graduate work, um, we noticed that the research we were doing had, had a lot of, we shared a lot of common ground. And although we went about our um, research with different processes and different kinds of activities to achieve our end choreographic goals, we found that we were asking similar questions. Questions like, who gets to dance? How do we frame dance? How do we experience dance? And, when, and with the question of how do we experience dance, that's a, a kinesthetic thing. It's all the senses, right? Kinesthetically, how do you smell, sight, taste, you know, yeah. feelings, all of that. How do you experience dance? Um, so we, we, we want to continue that research and, and um, provide different venues for watching dance to be able to um, continue that research. We also do a lot of work with dancers and non-dancers, people who have taken dance classes their entire lives and decided to pursue dance as their career, and people who have never danced or done, taken a few dance classes, but do it either, pursue it socially or, um, or as, as something that's fun, right? And it's, it's exciting to us and interesting to us the relationship that happens between these non-dancing communities and these dancing communities and, and the non-dancing communities and non-dancing communities, all of the different relationships that can occur there are really interesting to us. And so this first piece is a good experience for you to get to um, firsthand see what we've been researching because you will all have the opportunity to participate in this, um, this dance, this movement experience game in some way, shape, or form. You may choose that you only want to experience it by watching it, and you may choose to step in and actually um, create the movement yourself. To facilitate this experience, we have my dear friend Kendall Lynn Millicum, who's a beautiful dancer and a beautiful artist herself, who will explain how to play the game. Okay, so we have some rules that I'll explain, make you feel a little better about knowing what to do, what not to do, things like that. Um, but first, let me give you a little background about the, the name of this piece that you'll all be a part of. It's called Common Ground. Um, Common Ground is a movement experience designed to provide an equal opportunity for audience members and performers to participate by observing and or moving as a collective group. The goal of this piece is to facilitate these questions. How do you frame dance? How do you kinesthetically experience dance? And I'm gonna show you three gestures that we're gonna do in the dance so that if you want to participate, you can. Here's number one. It's pretty simple, I think everyone can pull that off. Number two is this, hopefully you can see me. If you can't, look for someone in a Dance Matters t-shirt. They are bright red, they will show you. And here's number three, like this. So this is, this is our common ground right here. We come back to these three gestures. Um, the other rules are you can enter and exit whenever you want to, which is vaguely defined because it's just sort of anywhere in this room, right? So you can exit, I guess, by stepping back or you know, watching. And so that's the other rule. You can either watch, you can observe, or you can participate, or both, depending on you know, how you feel at the moment. Um, let's do the three gestures again, just so you know. Number one, you can see way over there. Number two, Number three, and it's a little flexible. You can do two hands, one hand, either side, you know, things like that. You'll see as it, as it gets going. 
Um, the music signals the, the beginning and the end, so don't worry about that. Um, when we're done, find an ending place so that we can kind of all come together, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Um, also, this was inspired by the work of Liz Lerman, so if you're interested, you know, after the fact, go check out some of her work, that would be great. Um, and also, if you're curious, there's an insert in your program that kind of explains the rules and things, more information about this experience, so you can look at that too. So we'll begin. So as our music is ready um, to get going, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and find a special spot to start. So maybe go to a new place in the room, wherever you are. 